to start, my name is Ashley Shabankere. I use she, her pronouns. I am based in New Orleans, Louisiana. Uh, if you don't, maybe aren't looking at the screen at this moment, I have light brown skin. Behind me are some pretty big posters. I have a lamp behind me. You might see a cat come in at some point because my cat always shows up when I'm on Zoom. Um, but I am a trombonist and a vocalist, and I have performed with the likes of Alan Toussaint and Aretha Franklin. I have my own acts here in uh, New Orleans, including a group called Marina Orchestra, and I used to work full-time for Preservation Hall. Uh, these days, I am living that work-from-home life, and so, you know, trying to navigate being a musician in the time of COVID, which a lot of us are doing. So um, today's presentation is really focused in on websites because I wanted to give everyone a little taste of the industry as a person who has worked in the industry my whole time and career of being a musician. I think it's super crucial to talk about both aspects because they always intersect together. Promoting yourself and also performing all come together in a really big way. So today we're gonna cover a few big things. Do you need a website? what makes a good website, um, so what makes an effective website, then we're also looking at what platforms are out there and then should you DIY it. All right, so we're gonna continue that along and if anyone has questions at any point in time, feel free to unmute yourself. When I'm in presentation mode, I might not be able to see everyone's hands being raised, so feel free to just unmute yourself and ask a question. All right, so I wanna start out with a little activity time, if you all wanna do some call outs or if you wanna drop stuff in the chat, I just wanna get a sense of who's everyone's favorite artists are. And then to further that, do they have a website that you like? So I just want everyone to take a moment to think right quick about an artist that you're really into, if they have a website, and if you wanna share out either in the chat or if you wanna share out by unmuting yourself, that is super cool too. Awesome. Nope, they don't have to be living. That is a great question. So you're welcome to drop whatever is floating your boat in the chat or you can unmute yourself. Okay, great. These are awesome. Awesome. I'm loving some of the, the names that I'm seeing in the chat. Yes, I'm seeing some names that I really enjoy too. Awesome. These are all awesome, awesome, awesome names that I'm seeing in the chat. Okay, so I'm just getting kind of a good feel of where everyone's at, who they're listening to. So the reason why I brought this up, with the exception of, of some of the uh, musicians that maybe are no longer living, a lot of these musicians have websites and it's pretty crucial in this day and age to have a website. Uh, and that's, that's for a few big reasons. Uh, first of all, your website is like your one-stop shop. So as a person who's done booking for festivals and for venues, I can say, I go to a website before I go to your social media page first. I wanna go and find all of your information in one place. I wanna know if you have a Facebook page, if you have an Instagram, if you have a Twitter, if you have a TikTok. I wanna go all in one place rather than looking around at all these different places for your information. Um, it, it basically, it has people in one place for your music. So they don't have to keep researching for you and what you do. Again, it's all in one place. I also wanna emphasize not everyone's on social media. I feel like a lot of us are taking a little bit of a social media break during this time, especially older adults in the industry. A lot of older adults are not looking at social media just as like a little bit of a mental break. The other big thing here is you have control over your own website. When we think about social media, we have to think about all the different changes that get made, we aren't the people that own it. We aren't the people that are paying for it. We're using a free platform that exists and that is created by someone else. So this gives you the ability to control what you want it to look like without the boundaries and the parameters that exist on social media. And it makes you look like a total pro. So all good things there. So I wanna give some information on what makes a good website. So 
good websites are always going to be user friendly. And when I say user friendly, I mean, you get to the website, anyone can use it. It's super chill. They can navigate really easily. Uh, subsequently, it is going to have responsive formatting. So what that means is on your web browser, it looks one way. And then when it switches over to, to mobile, it condenses down in a way that is readable and user friendly. I bring this one up because not all web platforms do that. Not all websites do that. So it's just something to be really conscientious of. You also want effective navigation. So when I was saying user friendly, a big part of that is, can I find everything I need at the top of your website in a really quick manner? I think sometimes we go to some websites and we're like, oh wait, where am I going? What am I looking for? And this isn't just music websites. I'm talking any website. You want it to be really clear about where you're trying to find information. The less clicks, the better. Especially as a musician, you want it to be really clear. This is where you go for my music. This is where you go for my bio. This is where you go for my shows. This is how you contact me. The clearer you make this information, the better. You also want well formatted content. And what I mean by that is you don't want content that's like has different margins and, and everything looks a little strange. Maybe it's again, it's not not like logical order. You want things to be formatted in a really clear, easy to read way. When I think about websites, I'm really thinking about the booking process and people who are coming to visit you who are trying to book you and subsequently people who are visiting your page that might become future fans or that are your fans. Uh, you also want usable forms. This is a huge one. So if we're thinking about contact pages or something similar, a usable form being one that you essentially make sure the form works and go somewhere. I think I've been to way too many sites to book someone and I've gotten there and the form doesn't work to actually contact them. And that's a potential loss of a gig. So you don't want to lose out on a gig just because your form doesn't work. So always making sure your forms work. And then again, browser consistency. Does the website platform that you're using work from browser to browser? So I've found that some websites work really well in Google Chrome, but they don't work in Safari or they don't work in Firefox. So trying them out in different web browsers. These are all things that are going to make your website really good. Any questions there? Everyone's doing good. Awesome. I'm like trying to see everyone's faces that I can see. All right. And I'm just going to keep moving right along because our time together is really short. So I, I brought up, of course, Lucia, uh, just because I think this is a crucial, great example. I wanted to tie it back into all of the wonderful women that are presenting today just to show they have good and effective websites. So this is just an example visually. So effective websites. Again, I had just mentioned good websites, effective websites. Your effective websites, you have to have some basic things on here. And of course, you don't need all of these right when you start your website, right off the bat. You can grow into these over time. But the most crucial one, having your name front and center. You wanna make sure that people know that it's your website. So if you don't have your name somewhere clear on the website, it might be a little bit harder for them to connect or remember you as an artist. Um, effective websites also promote your career. So again, thinking back to some of your favorite artists, think a little bit more about how it promotes their career. Maybe there's some tie-in to their past recordings or like music videos or press photos. It's a way to showcase you. So this is a really great spot to showcase who you are. You also want to have or think about having some form of fan engagement. And so when I say fan engagement, uh, I, I think a really good example here, if we think about uh, Lady Gaga. I'm going to use Lady Gaga as my example because I think she has a really great fan engagement thing, all of her little monsters. Uh, she has a whole platform where you log in and her fans can engage directly with her. You don't have to do this again. You don't have to do this right away. But if there is a capability for you to build one over time or maybe connect to something like a Patreon, awesome, do it. Uh, again, if, if you wanna do it on your own, cool. If you wanna use something like Patreon to do it, cool. But you wanna have some sort of mechanism that 
as you grow further into your career, you can engage more with your fans, the people that are coming to your shows, the people that are paying for your merchandise, the people that are actually paying the cover charge. It's also a, a great spot. So effective websites also provide you with a mechanism for building your audience. Uh, this is things like including your social media links. It is something that is easy to share and digestible. Um, at times, I like to think about effective websites more like an electronic press kit. So it is your, again, your catch-all, your space that you can really build and connect to your audience. Effective websites also tend to generate some sort of revenue. So it, again, if we're thinking about our favorite artists, especially our artists that are living, maybe some of the, the more mainstream artists, they always have some sort of mechanism for e-commerce. So they can sell their CDs, their physical CDs. They can sell a t-shirt, they can sell a sticker, they can sell a download. Uh, they might even sell tickets to a live stream concert on their website. So having some sort of way that you can earn money from your craft is also a really effective tool. And then again, connecting to other platforms. I've mentioned things like Facebook and Instagram and Patreon. You want to be sure that you have some ability to connect some social links and make it where, again, it's that one-stop shop. So now that we know what effective websites are, I'm also just showing a little bit of Tank and the Bangas, another New Orleans band. They've done it really, really well. They have a mechanism at the top to log in for fans. You can get their music, you know where their shows are, you know where their videos are, you can shop. It is effective in terms of all of the basics. And also if you look at the top, they have all of their social links. So it's everything that I could ask for in one. So there are four different platforms that do exist in the universe. And forgive me, I am talking a million miles a minute because I know we only have a certain amount of time together, but talking about promotion is so crucial. So there are four different platforms that are out there for musicians that are really crucial for musicians. There's Banzoogle, Wix, WordPress, and Squarespace. So I'm just gonna break down each of them just so y'all have a, a better feel for each of these different types of platforms. Banzoogle, this one was really made for musicians at its core. Super easy to use templates, drag and drop editors, super mobile friendly so that whole responsiveness it is there you can stream music on this platform you can integrate this with your social media so it pops up on your website they have really really awesome customer service which if you're building a website for the first time is so nice to have and it also comes with your domain name and i emphasize that one because not all websites give you your domain name like you can't purchase your domain name you might have to go to somewhere like a godaddy or a different platform to purchase your own domain name so that's like even more money to spend um the cons here there's no free website option and i i did want to try to find platforms that you could do a free option especially since y'all are you know, building your careers, but they don't have one and they have a really super basic blog. I think for a lot of musicians, having a blog as a way to connect with their fans is a really crucial tool. And so I just wanted to bring up, it's a little bit basic, but overall super awesome. Um, I am gonna give y'all pricing on each of these just so you have it. And you'll also get this whole presentation after this as well. There's average to be at the low end about ten dollars at the month at the high end twenty dollars a month and it changes based on what you need and i think the one thing i really want to emphasize as i show you these prices just so you're aware of them is purchase something if you're going to do a diy website that a fits your budget and b fits what your current needs are if you don't need to do ticket sales right now if you don't need to do pre-sales then don't do it it's super chill um, all right, so this is an example of a website that was built in Banzoogle. Uh, it looks a little blurry initially because this is actually a GIF. And so this website is like super animated and super fun, which I totally dig. Uh, so that's just an example there. And yes, you are going to be able to have access to this presentation. So you will totally have all of these notes, all of like the pros and cons as well. All right. So now we're going on to Wix. Wix, they do a free plan, but your domain name has the weird formatting. So it's like your name dot Wix dot com. That is not a make or break thing. It's just something to be aware of. It's like not your standalone name. So 
it's totally great as a stepping stone platform as you start growing your, your online platform. Um, they also have a drag and drop editor. I have, I, I should have prefaced, I've built a lot of websites in my day and I'm a fan of a drag and drop editor, like just so then I don't have to think or do a lot of coding. So that's what makes that great. You can have analytics. So tracking a lot of this information of who's visiting your website, where are they coming from? This is such crucial information. And as you grow in your career, you will definitely want these analytics. You're gonna to wanna to see where your fans are coming from. And this information is so vital. And then it also can connect to your social tools. So again, emphasizing social media connection is huge here. Um, so, oops, I went too far ahead. Okay, so depending on your plan, this Wix can be a little costly. Um, and, you know, I just wanna note that this one does add up pretty quickly depending on what plan you get. The basic website options don't have e-commerce here and then the drag and drop, although they have it and it's super awesome. The last time I used it, it wasn't super user friendly. So it's just something to be aware of. It might just be a little frustrating at times when you're first building out that website. All right. So again, here are the costs here. See on this high end, they started at $39 a month, which is a lot. Even for me, that's a lot of money per month. So this is just giving you an example of what everything is. You don't have to write this down. It is on their website. I literally just pulled a screenshot from their website, but this gives you a sense of what you're looking at. This doesn't even include the e-commerce options. This is just for the website itself. So if you wanted the e-commerce options, it's actually a little bit more money. Um, Bria's website actually is built on Wix. So I just wanted to give Bria's website as an example. You can make a super beautiful website on Wix. She has a lot more of the plugins because she has things like the store. So I'm just giving you some examples here in the jazz realm. Moving on to WordPress. So WordPress is the most widely used format for websites. Uh, they have a great content management system. It's something that is referred to as CMS. You have plugins, you can do multiple types of plugins, which is really great, especially if you're trying to do a little bit more customization. It's designed for a lot more simplicity and search engine optimization, which is what SEO is. And then there's also e-commerce plugins. This one is going to be a lot more low cost in the grand scheme of costs. This one is like super low cost uh, and they have a lot more consistent updates. I'll note on the cons end, Custom layouts are a little bit hard to use at times. Um, the last time I built out a website with WordPress and when we used it for Preservation Hall, I found that it was a little bit more prone to hacks. People have really figured out ways to hack WordPress websites. And having a little bit of prior knowledge of like HTML or CSS is pretty crucial for WordPress, especially with more customization. Again, pricing wise, you're looking at like $4 a month on the low end, which in the grand scheme of things, close to $50 for the whole year. Super awesome. You can start out with a free web version on WordPress. Again, super awesome. But this gives you the whole suite. It can start really low and this might be a great starter version and it can be a lot of money if you go for a lot more of the higher options. Um, an example here, the Jazz Education Network actually uses their, their website is built on WordPress. So this is just an option here to show you. Now our final version that we have here uh, is Squarespace. So Squarespace, super easy to use, ready to publish templates. Backend design is again, super easy to use. They have a bunch of pre-made templates. So you can literally just import the template, change out the text or the photos and you're good to go. It's all in one, so you can get your domain name as well, and they have 24 seven support. This is one of those websites that doesn't have a free website option. There is no phone support. It's a little bit more costly. Um, there's no option for third party apps and editing can be a little bit cumbersome. So that is your high points there. Um, in terms of cost on the low end, it's $16 a month. On the high end, it grows exponentially. I personally use Squarespace, um, so this is actually my website, and I found it is really easy to use, super, super easy to use, and I was able to build a website in literally two hours, so it, it was quick. 
So now the final question, just because we're in our final stretch and I realize we only have about five minutes left together, uh, should you DIY? So think about, do you have the time to build it? And I, I would say as you're early in your career, DIY as much as you can when you're early in your career. Um, do you have the money to build it? So really think about, again, going back to all those other slides where I showed you the costs, think about what your budget is each month. Think about what your budget is for the whole year. If it's not that much money, go with the versions that start out free. You don't have to go with all the bells and whistles early on. Your website can change over time. And I just really want to emphasize that. You don't have to spend a ton of money when you're first starting out doing DIY websites. And then the final question you should ask yourself, are you ready to have a website? So I, I noticed that we are a wide variety of ages on this phone call. So for those of you that are a little bit older, maybe you're in high school, maybe you're college age, this might be a good time to start thinking about a website. But if you're more the 10 through 12 range, maybe not right now. Um, so think about that as well in terms of DIYing. So I'm actually gonna stop sharing my screen. Um, I have all my info there, but again, you're gonna get this presentation after.